clearly we need to double down on our already existing plans to upgrade systems for these extreme circumstances. Right now on News 5 Today, travel woes continue, especially for Southwest Flyers, why the company says they're dealing with so many delays and cancellations. Plus, with all of the chaos for Southwest, you might be wondering if they're travelers that are indebted to some compensation. We're going to show you what those are and are not required to offer by the airline. And your trips to the grocery store, they're going to look a bit different in the new year. We'll talk about Colorado's new law discussing plastic bags, how much they'll cost, and why they are doing this. This is a First Alert 5 weather alert. A good Wednesday morning. It's 6 a.m. Glad you're up with us. I'm Ira Cronin. Bree is off. And Sam, we're starting the yep. day out in a way that is not going to look like how we're going to finish the day It'll out. be a deceptive day because <laughs> yeah. a lot of us will love the weather through the early afternoon. But after that, rain, a little Hold snow, on. and then <laughs> pavement that tries to keep up with the cold. So winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings are in effect. With the San Juans under the winter storm warnings, that's where a combination of wind and heavy snow will hit the worst. Uh, honestly, Crested Butte, Aspen, Monarch Pass will do pretty well, but then in El Paso County and Teller County, we definitely could have a pretty high impact storm late this evening into tomorrow morning. So. Radar is showing where most of the snow is still out west. There's likely more snow into the mountains that our different radar beams can't see very well. That's always part of the challenge of Colorado. Our mountains literally block some of the tools I use to see snow when it's farther out west. Day planner today, I think by 5 o'clock, rain is probably turning to snow in northern El Paso County, probably still raining it downtown. Pueblo is seeing some rain, but by 5 o'clock, I think Woodland Park and Monument, at that point, we're starting to snow. Ira? All right, always getting us ready. Thank you, Sam. Well, right now, both directions of Nevada Avenue remain closed between Columbia and Del Norte in Colorado Springs. That's just north of Colorado College campus and just south of Penrose Hospital there. It's going to be closed for a bit longer now. We've had a crew on the scene all morning since about 4 o'clock. And law enforcement says it was a car heading southbound on Nevada. The driver lost control, veered into the center median, and hit a tree. Now, this happened exactly at the intersection of Nevada and Caramillo. The driver was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. No update on their condition. The passenger was pronounced dead on scene. Now, police do say excessive speed is believed to be a factor here. Again, as you can see, they are still investigating at this very moment. And when police spoke to us earlier at about uh, 450 this morning, they had this message for our community. This is our 55th fatal traffic crash this year. It's a record year for us. We had 51 in 2020. We want to put a uh, word out for people to slow down, um, drive with patience, and uh, know that uh, that tragedies like this can be prevented. Also this morning, one person was hospitalized after crashing a pickup truck into a tree in eastern Colorado Springs. Take a look. These are images from the Colorado Springs Fire Department. We don't have a lot of info on this incident just yet, but we do know what happened on Sturgis Road near Palmer Park. The driver had to be extricated from the cab of the pickup truck and taken to a local hospital. We've reached out to local law enforcement for more details on the investigation into this crash, and we'll bring those to you as soon as we get them. Well, this morning, we are learning more about why Southwest Airlines had a disproportionate amount of delays and cancellations and continued to do so. Southwest says it was the storm that hit late last week that was the catalyst, but the real problem also lies within their IT infrastructure for scheduling software for crews that is vastly outdated. Meanwhile, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg vowing to hold Southwest Airlines accountable for the mess that they created, saying his department's going to be taking a closer look at the problems and is prepared to issue fines if it finds the airline did not meet its legal, legal obligations to passengers. From what I can tell, Southwest is unable to locate even where their own crews are, let alone their own passengers, let alone baggage. The airline CEO Bob Jordan yesterday afternoon apologizing and saying more delays are likely this week, but he's optimistic the airline will be back on track before next week. Now, 
you may be wondering if passengers left stranded or forced to travel are owed any compensation. The Department of Transportation says passengers that choose to cancel their trip due to a flight cancellation are entitled to a refund even for non-refundable tickets as well as bag fees and any extras like seat assignments. Airlines can propose vouchers in lieu of a refund but you don't have to take it. Airlines, however, are not required to pay for any expenses because of travel disruption. So we're talking things like if you decide to leave the airport, get a hotel room or the meals that you may incur. But if the delay or cancellation is the airline's fault, most airlines will offer to pay for those expenses. Well, let's get you up to date on all of the delays and cancellations this morning across the country. There are about 600 delays and nearly 3,000 cancellations. Southwest accounting for over 90% of those. DIA, one of the most impacted airports across the country because of the Southwest issues. They have about 50 delays and 400 cancellations. 292 of those cancellations this morning. Southwest flights and here in the Springs, there's one delay on the board, according to flight aware and 26 cancellations, 22 of those out of the Springs. Also Southwest flights. Well, let's switch up gears looking ahead for you with the new year will come new laws and one of them is making it illegal for stores and retail food companies to provide those single use plastic bags in Colorado without charging you a fee. Caroline Peters joins us live in studio with more on the House Bill, Caroline, and really how it's going to impact us all. Yes, if you like to shop at certain grocery stores, it definitely will. Starting on January 1st, if you want a plastic bag at the store, you have to pay 10 cents for that bag. The alternative, a reusable bag like this one, cost me 79 cents the other day. Seems like a lot more, but in the end, it's going to save you money. What you might be wondering, though, is why is this all happening? It's the start of House Bill 211162, and it's only the start. At the start of 2024 in a year, stores can only give out recycled paper bags at 10 cents each. Plastic bags will then be banned. Styrofoam food containers, those will also be banned in Colorado at the start of 2024. The new law, this has mixed emotions among shoppers. I mean, we're using a lot less bags. We're having a lot less waste going into the ocean, to landfills. So I think it'll probably be good, but in the long run. Mom and pop type shops, they won't need to worry too much though. Businesses with three or fewer locations, they don't have to comply to the law. This is going to impact those larger franchises, Safeway, Walmart, King Supers, and Target. And the cities that have laws charging even more than 10 cents per bag, per plastic bag already, they're able to hang on to those laws. That includes Aspen and Boulder. In our next half hour, we're going to hear from someone who's opposed to this new law. We'll have a statement from one company banning plastic bags entirely starting January 1st. Back to you. All right, thank you, Caroline. And also starting in April of 2024, businesses that have the recycled paper bags in stores will pay 60% of the carryout bag fee revenue to the municipality or the county that the store is located in. The business can keep the remaining 40%. All right, on a weather alert Wednesday morning, let's get back over to meteorologist Sam Schreier timing out this winter storm. Still trying to get our web story updated. Usually, I have my forecast all the way done on our website, KOA.com, by like 5.30 at the latest. But today, I'm still finishing it up. That's how difficult I have the storm. Now, we're talking about this moisture trapped in the jet stream. It came out of the Pacific, and it's flowing across the west, giving California, Oregon, Washington, much near the snow and we're bringing in that snow through the western slope. Now I want to show you just kind of right away what additional snowfall could kick out through the mountains here. San Juan Range doing really well. Telluride about 9 to 10 inches of snow. Durango like 3 to 4 inches. Wolf Creek Pass 9 inches. That could be a little conservative on the number here. Maybe an easy foot up into Wolf Creek Pass through tomorrow afternoon. Monarch Mountain, seven to eight inches of snow, and then we pan up a little bit. Kind of thinking that Preston Butte were about five to seven inches of snow there. I think that I-70, let's say you travel plans tonight through tomorrow morning. Well, snow could range from anywhere of like three inches to maybe as high as seven inches. 
kind of depending on the spot you live in. And we'll talk a little bit about how locally there's some good looking snow on the way, but there is a large spread in our weather models. I look at a whole suite of products when I get in and I've had stuff telling me as high as 10 inches and I've had stuff telling me as low as a half inch at Monument. It's one of those storms. This is why our job can be really difficult. So I look at that and I try to give you guys my best estimate of what will happen. I know that we're going to get rain that turns to snow. It should be worse in northern El Paso County and Teller County this afternoon and tonight. Now, one of the challenges I'm going to face is road temperatures. We will eventually get them to fall to freezing after midnight, but that is going to melt the snow at first. And then that's when the ice comes is after midnight because you're going to have water on the roads. Probably more of an issue in the Pikes Peak region because more snow is there. But look at the road temps from 2 p.m. through 10 p.m. We're still not even to freezing on the roads in downtown in Colorado Springs. Monument should be by 10, but in Pueblo, I mean, even at 10 o'clock, we're seeing road temperatures in the 40s. So how do you forecast snow when you have that much warmth on the ground? It'll be actively melting it a lot of the night. Even air temperatures in Colorado Springs, this is 6 a.m., are finally into the mid 20s. So it's a warm storm in general, and it will start as rain. Rain showing up by about 2 o'clock in the Pikes Peak region, maybe as soon as 1 in Teller County. It starts to turn to snow by 3 in Teller County, 3 to 4 in Monument Hill. And then downtown by like 6, we should have all snow, and that's when it could just be dumping accumulation from mid-afternoon through the evening. 4 to 8 inches in the Pikes Peak region, that's Teller County, Monument, out through Callahan less when you go to downtown an inch or less in Pueblo, but to just kind of reiterate how spread out this storm is, it could be a classic example where it's kind of a dusting or an inch towards fountain and way more up in monument. Let's hit traffic and I'll do a really quick traffic hit. This is I-25 at Garner the Gods Road. No issues here and on my traffic map, still covering that accident that our photographer Juice has been out on Nevada. Ira. All right, thanks, Sam. Coming up next on News 5 today, crowds of people not unheard of at DIA, but crowds of luggage unattended. That's the situation this morning in the wake of the Southwest Service meltdown. Plus, at 618, Sam's back, giving you a deeper look at the week ahead, even beyond this storm that's arriving later today. Don't miss his Super 7 day forecast. Also ahead, with so many flights canceled, people are looking to hit the road instead. I'll show you how it's impacting our local car rental businesses and whether or not they can serve everyone that wants to rent a car. Right. This portion of News 5 is sponsored by The Good Place. Book your traditional or ashiatsu massage today to de-stress and relax with our five-star service and products. Welcome back 615 on your Wednesday morning. Pandemic restrictions on asylum seekers known as Title 42 will remain in place for now. The Supreme Court ruling yesterday to keep the policy until the case can be heard in February. Now, it was scheduled to be lifted December 21st, but a last minute stay kept that from happening. Immigration advocates argue the policy goes against American and international obligations to people trying to escape persecution. They also argue the policy is outdated with the improvement of COVID treatments. Right now, delays and cancellations have left nearly 10 thousand bags unattended up at DIA, leaving those from flights that never left Denver searching for their bags, some waiting in line for three hours just to file a baggage claim, hoping their luggage stayed in town after their flight was canceled. Jafar Barani is one of those who's been impacted by this situation, and yesterday he and his family made it all the way to their gate, or this was on Monday, I believe, when their flight to San Jose was canceled. Everyone's going through it, so like you can't get mad, but you're sad. You're trying to get help, and the line hasn't moved in like 40 minutes, and you just feel hopeless about it, you know? Uh, I was with my one year old son and my wife, and we just couldn't take it any longer. After waiting in long lines all day on Monday, Barani came back to do it all over again yesterday. At Tampa International, these delays and cancellations are. A real nightmare for many there, including Denver newlywed Matthew Christopher, who says his holiday started off nice enough, but has ended in a bit of a nightmare. This is obviously going back to see your friends and your family and doing the festive things. It's my wife's birthday and our first honeymoon as a married couple, and we don't have our bags. 
Well, currently the most impacted airports include DIA, also Harry Reid International in Vegas, Chicago Midway, Baltimore, Washington International, Nashville International, and Dallas Love Field. Well, let's get back over to meteorologist Sam Schreier tracking a weather alert. And uh, you got to wonder if this will impact the airlines, at least trying to recover in our area, Sam. Denver, we're kind of thinking about two to five inches somewhere in there. That, that, that's near downtown, maybe a little bit less than that out at the airport. Sometimes it's a blessing for DIA to be kind of as far away as it is from downtown. Sometimes it's not a little farther east. You can get a lot of wind out of that airport, but today it'll be pretty warm everywhere like 54 up in Denver. I went a little aggressive on my numbers with 55 in Colorado Springs. I was kind of thinking that the cold front will be not till the later day, so we'll have a lot of warmth with us and we'll have close to 60 out to Pueblo. Pretty warm as well down in Tobacco County and out to Lamar. So eventually some rain and snow are going to develop. Now some models are trying to bring it in as soon as noon. In my opinion, it's probably developing between one to two. So by two o'clock, we're looking at snow that's still pounding the west, a slope, but then in the Pikes Peak region, rain from Teller to El Paso County and up into Denver. So at that point, snow starts to quickly change over the higher up you go. So by three to four, we should be snowing in Teller County and then accumulations will follow in Monument by three to four. Rain should be changing over to snow. So after four, we could be looking at accumulation, but downtown we may not really get that snow changeover until let's say a little closer to like 5 or 6 p.m. And probably you, you could be missing out on rain for a little while, but you know, eventually it should drop on in. Now, part of the problem here is that the air today is pretty warm and so is the ground forecast pavement temperatures are not below freezing from 2 p.m. through 10 p.m. So we know we're going to get snow late today through, I think, at least midnight, and we're going to have the ground where we're driving above zero. Now, hopefully that really doesn't make this too big of a challenge for driving, but it could lead to slush and eventually ice overnight under some snow in Pueblo. We also think we're just going to be a lot warmer. So that's why this is such a difficult forecast, because I'm trying to account, account for some melting on the ground. I think that Puebla actually has the ability to get at least two, two and a half inches to fall, but only an inch or less is really going to stick around in a lot of the ground, kind of similar for Canyon City, about one to four inches in Colorado Springs, four to eight inches for Black Forest to Monument to Woodland Park. The eight inches is a little aggressive. That's a little high. Five to seven, you know, about the same. That's a little bit more there, especially around six inches. And I think when you break this down over the counties here, especially like the Pikes Peak region, that snow changeover happens quicker in Teller County and it happens quicker north of Briargate. So that's why those totals are, you know, twice as high is what we could see downtown. Kind of a common snow setup. If you just moved here, you're a little new here to see that much of a spread over the city. You'll probably learn pretty quickly that's that's just the way life is in Colorado Springs, but we're going to have that snow through tomorrow morning and temperatures will fall below freezing. So untreated roads probably will get icy overnight into Thursday morning and we have snow chance next Monday. Pueblo, I think that eventually we'll get just into freezing by tomorrow morning, so not a whole lot of accumulation, but you could still have untreated pavement that has some water on it that might get a little icy Thursday morning. Kind of up slopey flurries are possible overnight through Thursday. So Canyon City, maybe a little bit of ice on the roads through Thursday morning, but not a whole lot of accumulation. Woodland Park, that's that different story. Snow starts falling as soon as about three to four. That quickly accumulates through the evening commute to at least three to four inches, and then we could still get a few more inches through Thursday morning when untreated roads would get slick. Let's hit traffic. We'll do a look at I-25 and Tejon. This is kind of a great part of town where not a huge amount of snow will fall, but it could still be enough to make it slick outside. We had a lot of accidents with only an inch or two the last couple storms on our network. Colorado Springs still looks good. Still tracking that accident in Nevada north of downtown. The police are there to divert you around. It's not a huge impact to most commutes and then up to Denver. We're still looking good. Ira. All right. Thank you, Sam. As we head to break, let's give you a live look outside in Colorado Springs right now. When we come back, if you're planning on toasting in the new year, well, we've got to look at how to do that on a budget so you hopefully don't waste your money. Whether your schedule has changed or stayed the same, watch on your time. Search for KOAA on your device, streaming 24-7. 
All right, welcome back at 624 with snow on the way today. It's a good time to update what we've already got in terms of snowpack. So that's kind of exciting is what the snowpack will look like when this is all done. We're going to go ahead and kind of examine what things look like at the moment. Now, I, I've been asked this before. Why can there be snowing if I'm out in the mountains, but my app is showing nothing over me. So there's a couple radar dishes that we have available. A big one in Grand Junction, a big one up in Boulder that helps cover the Denver Metro, and we have a large dish out in Pueblo that'll help cover Southern Colorado. So they're kind of strategically placed to maximize coverage. But the problem is we got big old Rocky Mountains flooding the middle of the state. Now that beam is sent out from the radar and it goes up to try to maximize what it sees, but we have these giant peaks in the way that block it. So the the truth is along the middle of the Rockies, there's just not a whole lot we can do because of our unique terrain. So we can still get around it with some of that snow forecasting. We can still see decently well, but that's why oftentimes we rely on reports. Now the forecast in the high country through tomorrow is going to be close to 10 inches in Telluride, around 10 inches in Wolf Creek Pass and about five to six inches in Crested Butte. Modern could do seven to eight inches and it'll be a little less over the high country. This is some pretty good snow and it's going to add to an OK snowpack. Remember, this is the typical La Nina weather pattern that gets us through the winter and it's kind of crazy how much the current pack still mirrors this trend. So watch these values and let's go see what it is. So where should we be above normal right through here? Remember at a snowpack map, anything at 100% or more is above normal. So that's perfect. Where are we supposed to be at normal? Well, close to the Denver basin. So where are we supposed to be below normal? Typically on La Nina year, these basins, and that's exactly what we have. Hope is that we can snap out of this at the end of the winter and maybe pick up a heavy mountain snow year next year. Ira. All right. Thank you, Sam. Coming up next on News 5 today, we'll talk about how all these flight cancellations are impacting our local car rental companies and whether or not they can serve everyone that is calling. And let's say good morning to Caroline Peters here in studio to find out what you're working on, Caroline. Good morning. Starting next year, trips to the grocery store, they might look a little bit different. We'll talk about the state's new plastic bag policy, how much this is going to cost and who it will impact. Covering Southern Colorado, real-time reporting, community-focused, in-depth. This is KOAA News 5. This is a First Alert 5 weather alert. Well, good Wednesday morning, last Wednesday, Sam, of uh, 2022. The last Wednesday of our <laughs> very beautiful behind-the-scenes employee, Daniel Sanchez. He produces our show and... He's jetting off to sandy shores of California. Yeah, the weather's going to be terrible for him there. Yeah, he's really oh, going to well. struggle with all those 70s <laughs> sunshine. All right, well, uh, if you're looking to get home from work today, if, if you're not lucky enough to have the week off, that might be a challenge today. Yeah, no kidding. I think that we're going to have pretty intense snow try to develop in the Pikes Peak region late today and tonight. So there are winter weather advisories already in effect in northern El Paso County, including Teller County. But the worst snow is forecast to be over the western slope tonight through tomorrow. Already seeing some pretty good snow out there, but let's kind of jump to today. Day. Kind of a tough one, everybody. We're going to be in the 50s at lunch, so how do we snow? Well, we get some cold fronts. Those kick in late today, but it'll actually start as rain. First in the Pikes Peak region, downtown could still be rain by 5, but we should change the snow shortly after. Pueblo, we may not change the snow until after 6 or 7 p.m. Ira? All right, thank you, Sam. Well, right now, happening right now, both directions of Nevada Avenue closed between Columbia and Del Norte in Colorado Springs. That's just north of the Colorado Campus College. It's just south of the hospital there, and it should be closed for another hour or two. Now, we've had a crew giving you a live look on the scene since about 4.30 this morning, and it looks like they might be wrapping up their investigation. Looks like they've got a wrecker in there now hauling that crash car away, but what we learned from law enforcement before 5 a.m. this morning is they believe there was a vehicle heading southbound on Nevada. The driver lost control, veered into the center median, and hit a tree. This happened at the intersection of Nevada and Caramillo just after 2 o'clock this morning. The driver was taken to a local hospital with serious injuries. The passenger, unfortunately, pronounced dead on scene. Excessive speed is believed to be a factor here, and law enforcement had this message for our community.
This is our 55th fatal traffic crash this year. It's a record year for us. We had 51 in 2020. We want to put a uh, word out for people to slow down, um, drive with patience, and uh, know that, uh, that tragedies like this can be prevented. This morning, we're also learning more about why Southwest Airlines has had such a high number of delays and cancellations. Southwest says the storm they hit last week was the catalyst, but there were also other issues with staffing as well as their IT infrastructure that they used to schedule their crews. That software said to be vastly outdated. Meanwhile, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is vowing to hold Southwest accountable for the mess it's created, saying his department is gonna be taking a closer look at the problems and is prepared to even issue fines if they find that the airline didn't meet its legal obligations to passengers. From what I can tell, Southwest is unable to locate even where their own crews are, let alone their own passengers, let alone baggage. The airline CEO, Bob Jordan, yesterday on the apology tour, apologizing, saying more delays to the customers uh, are likely this week, but he's optimistic the airline should be back to normal operations before next week. You may be wondering if passengers left stranded or forced to travel are owed any compensation. Well, the Department of Transportation says passengers that choose to cancel their trip due to a flight cancellation are entitled to a refund even for non-refundable tickets, as well as bag fees or any other extras like seat assignment fees. Airlines can propose a voucher that doesn't expire in lieu of a full refund, but you don't have to take it. Airlines, however, are not required to pay for expenses because of travel disruptions. So if you leave the airport, get a hotel room, and you have to eat out more than you were expecting, that's still on you. But if the delay or cancellation is the airline's fault, most airlines have policies in place where they will offer to pay for those expenses. Again, if they feel it was their fault that they canceled. Well, let's get you up to date now on all of those delays and cancellations this morning. They are climbing rapidly across the country. There are about 900 delays and nearly 3,000 cancellations southwest accounts for about 90% of all of those. DIA, one of the most impacted airports across the country. Because of the Southwest issue, they have 54 delays and almost 400 cancellations. 292 of those are Southwest. And here in the Springs, there's one delay on the board and 26 flights canceled. 22 of those, you guessed it, Southwest flights. Well, rental car companies are trying to keep up with demand from travelers stranded in our area who might be looking to rent a car to get home. Yesterday, we spoke with representatives from Avis and Hertz here in the Springs area. They said at one point they had no cars available to rent. Now that's pushed some travelers to even look as far south as Pueblo to try to rent a car to get home. Clayton Ermel, now he owns 719cars.com, a local mom and pop car rental service in Pueblo. He says calls to his business have significantly spiked. They sound desperate. Uh, they usually sound like they've called everything they can possibly think of um, and then you know, a lot of times if if i call them back they're like uh, which which place is this we he says unfortunately his small local company can't meet the needs of travelers looking to rent a car one way well with the new year will come new laws one of them is going to make it illegal for stores and retail food companies to provide those single-use plastic bags in colorado without charging customers a fee Caroline Peters joins us more this morning on the House bill that uh, is making all this happen. And how's this going to impact us all, Caroline? Well, if you shop at stores like Target, it'll definitely impact you starting on January 1st. If you want a plastic bag at the store, you'll have to pay 10 cents for that bag. The alternative, a reusable bag like this one. It cost me 79 cents the other day. Seems like a lot more money, but in the long run, it'll actually save you money. You might be wondering, why is this all happening though? Well, it's the start of House Bill 211162, and it's only the start. At the start of 2024, stores can only give out recycled paper bags at 10 cents each. Plastic bags, they're going to be banned. Styrofoam food containers also banned in 2024. The new law having mixed emotions among shoppers. It sucks because I use plastic bags to carry my groceries home because I don't have a car. And now I have to go buy used bag, uh, 
you reusable bags to go grocery shopping and have to carry all that extra stuff to the grocery store. Mom and pop type shops, they do not need to worry though. Businesses with three or fewer locations, they don't have to comply to this law. It's really going to impact those larger franchises, Safeway, Walmart, King Stoopers, and places like Target. What about the cities that have laws already charging for plastic bags more than 10 cents? Well, they're able to keep the charge that they already have, and also that includes Aspen and Boulder. Back to you. All right, thank you, Caroline. Now, the bill doesn't state that those receiving federal or state food assistance will be exempt from the bag fee. It does not explicitly, though, detail what those alternatives might be for the assistance. And the bill also states that there will be an exemption for medical product packaging. Well, although they don't have to, Walmart will not be providing single use plastic or paper bags at checkout or pickup starting January 1st, so in just a few days. They released a statement to Caroline yesterday when she reached out to them, saying in part, eliminating single use bags completely is part of our commitment to achieve zero waste across our operations and ultimately shift gradually toward a circular economy built on advancing reuse, refill, and recycling habits. I want to let you know McDivitt Law Firm will be offering free cab rides home on New Year's Eve to keep you from drinking and driving. So it works pretty simply. Here's the details. If you or someone you know had too much to drink on New Year's Eve, you can call a cab and tell the driver it's on McDivitt. If you're in Pueblo, you can call City Cab 719-543-2525. If you're in the Springs, call Z Trip at 719-766. 4567 and if you're ordering a ride on the Z Trip app, you can make sure to mark pay in car at the time of booking and then tell them it's on McDivitt. These free rides are only available between the drinking establishment and the customer's home, not to another bar or restaurant. All right, let's get over to meteorologist Sam Schreier now with some snow headed our way, Sam. Yeah, what we're talking about today is a lot of moisture being fed from the Pacific Ocean back into Colorado. It's already happening with the jet stream pointing the way and we're going to get a lot of snow into the high country with the San Juans in particular just soaking up that moisture. Very typical pattern for the San Juans. Southwest jet stream in the winter, we usually get good snow about 10 inches in Telluride, probably at least 10 inches at Wolf Creek Pass, maybe a little bit more there. Pagosa Springs and Durango are pretty good. Seven to nine inches at Monarch, especially up on the mountain a little bit. Good for skiing this week weekend, excuse me, about five to seven inches in Crested Butte. And let's say you add some travel tonight through tomorrow on I-70 or even today through tomorrow. The totals through tomorrow afternoon could range from three inches to maybe as high as eight inches on the interstate. And so it could be pretty tricky to be driving west or coming into town on I-70. Just warn your family if they're still affected by travel and trying to drive. We know that today is difficult. There are large model spreads. I could show you guys like six different models that have a different idea of how much will snow will fall in Springs or Pueblo or Monument. Some as low as a half inch to an inch in Monument, some as high as 10 inches in Monument. So that's why this job could be really difficult. The other problem is it'll rain first and then it'll turn to snow. I know that the heaviest snow is likely somewhere in northern El Paso County and Teller County, but then the other challenging part of this forecast is we will have slow falling road temperatures. So eventually snow will stack up on the roads and then after midnight, anything that's wet and not treated could turn to ice. But we think that's more of a tomorrow morning issue because look at the forecast temps from 4 p.m. through 10 p.m. It should be snowing in the springs in that time frame, but it's pretty tough to stick snow on the roads when you're 10 degrees above freezing in Pueblo. It's way warmer than that. So Pueblo, we may not even really hit freezing temperatures until like sunrise tomorrow morning. I mean, the air temperatures alone in Colorado Springs are pretty much into the 30s and 20s at their lowest through 6 a.m. So I think as far as like icing issues go, that's more of a tomorrow morning issue. In Pueblo, it's not a huge issue. We're going to watch for it tomorrow morning, but we're just generally a lot warmer in Pueblo. So not as much of a snow impact there. Now we should be getting rain to start up between 1 to 2 o'clock. Snow is going to change over in Woodland Park between about 
th 2 to 4 o'clock. By 3 to 4, it should be snowing. Monument Black Forest, by 3 to 4, we should be snowing here. And then downtown, by about 5 to 6, that should be changing to snow. And then the rest of it settles south overnight. Now, how much could fall? Real tough gear. 1 to 4 inches in the springs, 48 inches in Monument, 48 inches in Woodland Park, but a lot less through Pueblo. The totals over the city could really be wide ranging. Maybe only a couple inches at downtown, but a lot more up north. Let's go to our favorite, John Matteries, this morning. I'm John Matteries with some great alternatives to champagne for your New Year's Eve, including one pretty awesome non-alcoholic drink. That story coming up. Back in your Consumer Watch this Wednesday morning, for most people, buying champagne might be a once-a-year occasion, maybe for New Year's Eve. But you don't have to have a champagne budget for a champagne taste. Consumer reporter John Matteris shows us some affordable options, even some non-alcoholic, so you don't waste your money. Molly Wellman is a mixologist, a bartender who specializes in unique drinks. For New Year's Eve, she says... I mean, champagne's great, but you can, like, spruce up champagne. Molly suggests you dazzle your guests with something different that can cost less than fancy bubbly. It's called a Boothby, and it dates back to 1900. The Boothby cocktail mixes bourbon, sweet vermouth, and sparkling white wine. And we're just going to put a little bubbly on there, and voila. She also suggests a passion fruit French 75 from World War I that's made with gin, then... We're going to add some passion fruit juice. And for a little sweetness... Some simple syrup. And a touch of sparkling wine with no need for expensive champagne. Champagne is champagne, right? It is a protected name uh, from a specific region in France, and it is the most expensive sparkling wine on the market. Adam Teeter of Vine Pair says to get the champagne feel at a lower price, try Cava, which is made the same way as champagne, or Prosecco from Italy, which has a much more affordable price tag. You should not spend more than 25 bucks for a Prosecco. Adam, like Molly, suggests using it in a cocktail to save on costs. Now, if this all looks great to you, but you say, you know, it might be too much alcohol for some of my guests, Molly says, don't worry. There are also some great non-alcoholic New Year's drinks, including this one that I can even drink here in the job. We're going to add an ounce of our spiced cranberry. It's a non-alcoholic holiday mule with cranberry juice, then just a little bit of fresh lime juice. Finally, alcohol-free ginger beer. It's just a beautiful holiday drink. As more and more people discover the old things, they're bringing them back. Affordable champagne alternative so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. All right, well, some important news in the weather department, Sam, as we are weather alert and we got snow moving in later today. Yeah, I'm swinging over to high temperatures. I kind of wanted to jump out here because it allows me a little bit more time to kind of analyze what kind of snowfall could be on our way. This is going to be a difficult forecast. I was kind of saying on Twitter um, that I think this is one of the more difficult ones I've had since last May and the huge snow last May. Well, that one was difficult. That one was hard and this one's kind of similar where it's starting warm and then we have to try to grab some snow 50s and 160 out there for Pueblo is a high today. So the atmosphere from yesterday is going to still be quite warm. Now we should be looking for snow later in the afternoon, but it starts as rain. Even Teller County between one to two, there could be some rain. It'll quickly change to snow in Teller County, especially like Woodland Park. But by about three, we should be seeing snow by four. It's snowing and at that point. It's probably really starting to pack up. These big wet snows can just dump heavy amounts, especially in Teller in northern El Paso County by six o'clock. Even like Pikes Peak region, even downtown should be seeing rain at that point. It's turned to snow. But newer guidance isn't as favorable to Pueblo, and especially south of Pueblo, there probably won't be much moisture. One of our big issues here is the roads. Now, we're warm today. We were going to be warm from yesterday, so that ground heats up really quickly. Pavement temperatures are forecast from 2 p.m. through 10 o'clock to be above freezing. It's a pretty good chunk above freezing, too, even in the Pikes Peak region, but in Pueblo, it is way above freezing through 10 p.m. So if the ground is that warm, it's pretty tough to stack snow on it, right? And a lot of it could melt in the pavement, which is great for evening travel, but 
difficult for my job trying to let you know how much could fall. This is what we're going with accumulation right now. I have a big feeling these numbers will change in the afternoon. We're going to go with about four to eight inches from Woodland Park Monument to Callahan. A lot of model guidance is more in the five to six inch range, but in case the cold air comes a little quicker, I wanted to give us a little wiggle room here. Downtown Colorado Springs is kind of broadly one to four inches. I think the idea that downtown south is where you get less snow and then Woodman Road North, you start to get more. Not much of an impact Canyon City Pueblo. Remember, the pavement is going to be so warm on Highway 50 that there could be some icing overnight, but not a lot of accumulation. This illustrates it better. We're kind of staying from like Briargate North, you're grabbing two to five inches and then even more Monument Callahan Black Forest. Woodland Park pretty good, but downtown to Fountain, a whole lot less. That being said, when the snow kind of stops and recedes overnight, there could be some flurries through Thursday morning. But I think with a low of 24 into Thursday, well, ice could become an issue. There could be some freezing pavement where snow falls on top. We're dry through the weekend, but then on Monday, could be kind of a substantial snow. We're kind of watching that one with excitement. Pueblo, rain to snow is going to fall in the forecast. I think that we will get some snow through tonight, but maybe a little bit of untreated road freezing, uh, roads freezing. The low is only 27, so it's not super cold, but it is below freezing. Canyon City is also below freezing, but Highway 50 will stay pretty warm overnight. So any sort of rain or overnight snow shouldn't really stick too much on the pavement. Woodland Park's a whole different story. Even by 4, 5, 6 o'clock, we should get snow accumulating to Highway 24. Untreated roads through tonight, well, they're going to stack up pretty good. Let's hit traffic. Start at I-25 and Uinta. Uh, it's beautiful this morning. A little bit of cloud and a little bit of sunrise giving us a view. We've had some traffic shut down on I, uh, high, or excuse me, Nevada, north and southbound, north of Colorado College, north of downtown. That was for a police incident. They are diverting people around pretty easily, so there's lots of options there around Colorado College. Up to Denver, no problems. Ira. All right, thank you, Sam. It's that time of morning as we go to break. Give you a live look outside when we come back. The five things you need to know before we go. Hello, to meet you. nice to meet you, I'm Bree. What do you find so important in our newscasts? Oftentimes you, you watch the news and you feel depressed when it's all over. You get kind of, you think, oh gee, the world's falling apart, you know. We're just gonna watch one of our newscasts right now and I kind of just want to get your thoughts on it. It was truth, it was positive, it was informative. No, no spin. Going into a newscast every day, you're putting together what you think and is meaningful to people. To watch it with you, to hear your thoughts, yeah. that's pretty incredible. 654 on your Wednesday morning time to get you the five things you need to know before we go right now both directions of Nevada Avenue are closed between Columbia and Del Norte in the Springs that's just north of the Colorado College campus it will be closed for at least a little bit longer as they are investigating a deadly accident police say the driver was taken to the hospital with serious injuries but the passenger unfortunately was pronounced dead on scene Across the country this morning, there are about 900 flight delays and nearly 3,000 cancellations. Southwest accounting for over 90% of them. DIA has 54 delays on the board and almost 400 cancellations. 292 of those Southwest flights and here in the Springs. Only one delay right now on the board, but 26 cancellations and 22 of those are Southwest flights. McDivitt Law Firm will be offering free cab rides home on New Year's Eve to keep you from drinking and driving. All you have to do is call a cab and tell the driver it's on McDivitt. If you're in Pueblo, you can call City Cab 719-543-2525. If you're in Colorado Springs, you can call Z Trip at 719-766-4567. And if you're ordering a ride on the Z Trip app, make sure to mark pay in car when you book it and then tell them it's on McDivitt. Sam? So I want to touch on again what we're expecting for snow that starts up late today and tonight. It will rain first. So if it's raining for a while and then it turns to snow, you just got to kind of wait it out. Eventually it'll get cold enough where that'll turn to snow. This could be problematic for the evening commute, but these totals are through Thursday morning. Probably pretty nasty up in the Pikes Peak region. I'll zoom in a little closer here. Through tomorrow morning downtown, we may wake up with a few inches out there. Maybe even an inch or two if a bunch melts, but Black Forest, Calhan, Monument, Woodland Park, well, that's where we do seem to have a better shot of getting somewhere over four inches. All right, let's do traffic. We'll do a traffic camera at I-25 and 
North Academy traffic today is really good so far on our traffic maps driving around Colorado Springs haven't had any issues again we've tracked that Nevada accident all morning but Denver drives still much better to drive to Denver than it is to be out in the airport all right thanks Sam of course today's show just minutes away and this morning they're going to be digging deeper into the national misery for the stranded air travelers as as we just told you thousands more flights canceled today they've got everything you need to know about the travel and the weather mess including what they're still dealing with in new york where i understand now sam they've even got the national guard enforcing a no driving policy in the in the city of buffalo still trying to dig out yeah so think about them and again real quick daniel yeah. behind the scenes producer thanks for all your help the last couple of years oh uh, daniel best of luck in san diego we're off to the today show